Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and we are continuing our little space program for beginners. I'm trying to take a look at some uh, new features. We have this new contract, Dock Two Vessels in Orbit of Kerbin. This is a standard con contract that everyone will get once they've unlocked the parts. You should pick it up. Uh, the expiration is just when it will disappear from the list. You will have an infinite amount of time to do it. Now, you're going to have to launch two spacecraft, so ideally you should make sure the spacecraft are useful for other things, right? Maximize your earnings. And uh, there's a few different things here, like rescuing John Locke Kerman. You could send the spacecraft up to rescue him. Interestingly, though, there's these new contracts to put space stations in orbit. In this case, they're in orbits around the moon. Now it says here that it needs to have a facility for five Kerbals and power, so let's unlock the bits and pieces we need for this. Okay, so we're going to be building a space station, right? So what do we want on a space station? Well, I think advanced exploration. This gives us the mobile processing lab, which... Well, it's actually a, a new item, or it's not so much a new item, it behaves in a new way, so it's almost worth including in this, just so we can show how it works. We should probably get better solar panels, since we need to launch that, that up. Um, and I'm going to get this seismometer, because more science is always useful to have. Now, to get this up there, we have advanced rocketry, which gives you the main sail engine and the twin bore liquid fuel engine that's a useful bit uh, advanced construction is useless on it well it's kind of useful but more interestingly it gives us the better docking port so we're going to do that that brings us down to 329 uh so yeah let's actually oh, oh look we've got the claw that would be a useful thing to bring on board as soon as you get the claw you start getting asteroid missions i think yeah, let's go for, let's go for command modules, right? So we can have all sorts of new two and a half meter parts. And advanced fuel systems, which we don't really need these larger fuel tank, but having these larger RCS tanks could be useful. So yeah, let's take those. That leaves us 9.4 science. Okay, so I think we're going to be able to do this. Let's go and accept the contract to put a station around the moon. That is easier contract. It only needs five Kerbals, which means it will be smaller. And uh, yeah, let's uh, take a look at what else we've got. Uh, as an aside, I have not visited the administration building. Now, the administration building is... It can be incredibly overpowered if you min-max it. The, the idea is that you use these different strategies to increase or to prefer one currency over an another. For example, Mortimer Kerman in finance can uh, raise money by running a fundraiser campaign. What this means is that you'll get less reputation gains, but you will get more funds for each unit of reputation. You'll only get about a thousand. That could make a big difference. Similarly, you can uh, you can per license your patent, so instead you will convert science to money. This will cost you some science to start with, and you will get stuff. You can adjust how committed you are to these, but you have to have enough of whatever you're trying to spend to start with. So, for example, you can go up to 25% here, and this, this will slightly improve your yield. Uh, compared, you know, it's not a huge difference, but uh, I don't know. It it's they're they're uh, potentially very powerful. The one uh, where is it? Outsource R and D increases, takes funds and gives you more science, which is potentially very powerful as well, right? Because you can get your science much faster. This is very easy to exploit to get huge amounts of science. I don't tend to touch it. We have one here as well. There's these two extra strategies down the bottom. These are basically, if you have run out of money, you can convert science directly into funds, although it's not a particularly good conversion rate. The bailout grant lets you convert reputation directly to funds. And again, you can increase the commitment to it. 25% is the maximum you can do with stock building. Uh, I guess I could spare the reputation, but it's not a lot of funds really from what that is. I've just tended to stay away from this 
in my games because I don't think it matters a huge amount. Definitely there are people that can min-max these, but I wouldn't worry too much that you haven't looked at it. Although I have to say, the best thing about this building is the cute Kerbal portraits here. I, I like these guys. I wish they would talk more to me. Okay, so let's uh, start building our space station. Now the idea is we need to have a space station that can go to the moon. It has to carry four Kerbals. Now, Remember the contract is for five, but what I'm going to do is use it as a docking target. We're going to dock another spacecraft to it, bring our total up to at least five, and then once we reach the moon, that spacecraft can land on the moon, pick up science and return, and we can do some scientific processing and stuff on it. Isn't that going to be grand? Okay, so we need to start our spacecraft with something that will uh, be suitable. So we've got that, and then we need the science lab. There we go. That should be a sufficiently awesome piece of hardware. Now, uh, we need an aerodynamic nose on it. And we need an aerodynamic nose that can carry a, a docking port here, right? So, we've got that docking port. Now, we have the big, we have the little docking port, which might actually be what we want to use here. Yeah, let's use the littlest docking port available to us. So, we'll adapt it down to that. And why not, while we're here, we'll stick a probe a dub a line So this will be the thing that hooks onto our spacecraft. But we will put the larger docking ports on because for future proofing reasons we might want to have bigger and better docking ports. Okay. So to make this a valid space station we also need power generation capability. So I'll put on some of these on it. Uh, yeah, we'll do these. So the difference between the solar panels is that these ones, without the covers, once they're unfolded, you can't fold them back in, whereas these ones, these can be folded back inside. So that's that. Now we've got docking ports, we've got uh, power. See, it, has to, it can support five Kerbals. Well, this will support four. Uh, and it needs an antenna. Well, the antenna could go in the other spacecraft, but just in case, let's put an antenna on it, because an antenna is super lightweight and doesn't really affect our payload very much. There, let's point that in that direction. There, okay, so that is the station. We've got room for all the bits and pieces. Now, I'm realizing that I'm probably going to have something docking against this. So I would like to refuel, and so I'm going to put this refueling uh, RCS tank here, right? That will be for helping with the docking. To make it steerable, we will add these RCS thrusters, four of them, and we'll just put them on relatively near the nose here. So that'll be off axis, and again, I think that's pretty good. Now we need to get this to the moon. So, um, will that be big enough? I have no idea. That might be big enough. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, I think I think that'll work. And then we're gonna put a poodle rocket engine on there. So that should get us to the moon. We could put some batteries, I guess, on there just in case. Batteries are nice to have because they provide support through those long, cold, lunar nights. There are again, four of those. Okay! One last thing is a pair of these little voltaic panels, because maybe I forget to actually deploy them. Okay, so we've got that. The other thing I need to be watching for is my height here, because this is going to be one of the biggest rockets I've built so far. And remember, this is only half of this mission. We have another half is to dock. So I'm going to use the twin bore here. We're going for a 140 ton rocket. And the thrust on the mainsail is at is about 1379. So that means it's actually too low to lift this. Whereas this, the thrust at sea level is 1866. So this should be sufficient to get ourselves off the pad. We will put... Delta Deluxe winglets on this for steering during the ascent. Uh, if I can get these things lined up. Come on. I cannot seem to do this. There we go. That looks a whole lot better. Okay, so 
that's we've got about 60 tons left to add fuel supplies so I'm gonna put a pair of these on the side now if you look at real rockets right when you add the fuel tanks the external fuel tanks and stuff you might be tempted to kind of put the fuel tanks on in the middle and build upwards kind of like this right let me see just what is our mass. yeah that would make our mass too big but the idea is you would kind of put these upwards well that's real world spaceships you don't actually need to worry so much about that you can build downwards and if you build downwards the advantage is that these things will tend to will will fall away with a little more safety let's say they're less likely to smash into the spacecraft as they detach okay so 134 tons we might just extend this a little. Is there, I'm going to put... Let's see if I can put a little more fuel on these external tanks here. Let's try that. Uh, no, that will just push us too far over the limit. But it would be nice. Maybe I can... Well, first of all, I should probably put on my fuel lines. Feed these inwards. Just, And we should probably add a pair of struts because these things will will need strutted so going into structural just take oh yeah I can grab these here da, 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 and da, 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 da. okay so that will hold these things stable yeah I guess I could use the Rockamax brand adapter and then oh you know what I could do hey here's an idea we could add a little extra thrust earlier on, maybe using these, using some solid rocket boosters. That might actually help for the first few seconds. So we've got 134 tons there. Put stack decouplers on here. This is nothing like a realistic rocket. Oh, 140.5. Well, you know what we can do here. Aha! Just shrink down the amount of solid fuel that I have. That'll help me get out of there. Finally, a pair of launch clamps, and look, notice when I attached the launch clamps that the height went higher than it should. I'm just going to take out these crew, because I don't think we need the crew on here. Uh, maybe, we should, maybe we could put a scientist on here. Uh, we don't actually need to send any crew to the moon, and in fact, I'm not planning on bringing them back, so it might be a good idea to put one of the crew on this mission. And since we need a scientist, that will be the one we're sending. Okay, but back to this. Uh, I was talking about the height. Well, the height is because the height of these launch clamps goes all the way to the floor. So, holding shift, grab the rocket and move it downwards. 40 meters. Oh, we're getting close. You can just grab the launch clamps. There. 139 tons. 34 meters high. This is looking good. Now we need to, of course, set everything up to happen in the right order. Because I always forget to do that. Main engine here. Now this main engine won't generate electrical power. This may be critical, but I wouldn't worry too much about it. So we launch, then we detach these after we've burned them out. Then these detach later on, and finally we detach that. And this engine is used to carry the spacecraft the rest of the distance into Moonar Orbit or wherever. So, let's now uh, give this a name. We shall call this... We shall call this Danger Mouse! There we go. Named after yet another hacking tool used by the NSA. Okay, so we have the usual ascent configuration. Enable your resources, stability control, throttle to 100%. Head over to the map and pop that out because you will be checking that on the way out. We're going to go into a standard uh, equatorial orbit. We're not going to do any inclination or anything because we want to make rendezvousing as simple as possible. When you've sufficiently collected your wits, hit the space bar and we will start going upwards. Immediately turn over a few degrees because these uh, solid rocket boosters are going to burn out very quickly and you don't want them landing on your launch pad you never know it might actually cause damage to them leaving those behind you can see them falling back they're going to miss we're going to be okay uh, you don't want your uh, 
you don't want your pitch to go down too far so I'm just having the thing hold stability with SAS. Now you're going to need to right click on these external fuel tanks and make sure you know when these things are burning out here. There that was the, that's these things, oh they are exploding, something's exploding and there, yes they both died. Okay, so we're going upwards, might want to throttle back just a little, just right now, because we are pushing through the kind of thicker part of the atmosphere. You'll notice that these engines, they're not really designed for extended use, so they tend to heat up too quickly, so press F10 to disable the temperature gauges. And I should have been paying attention more and turning over faster, so I'm going to try and do that right now. Once we are through this... Let go of controls while you're ditching these things, because nothing... Uh, the thing that's most likely to cause stages to hit your spacecraft is trying to turn at the same time as the jettisoning stages. Seriously, if you can let go of the controls and shut down the thrust for just a second, you can frequently fix many spacecraft designs which fail. Okay, so we're still coming up. And we're actually doing okay, so I'm just going to really flatten out this trajectory a whole lot here. I don't want the altitude to get too high because, of course, that is less efficient. But honestly, I think we're doing fine here. I'm just, I'm just aiming for the horizon here. Yeah, we got a transition to orbit, and yes, 77 kilometers. That's pretty good. Okay, so. Hit space. Look at that thing glowing red hot there. Jettison this. And fire our engines up. You might find that this thing has stability control depending upon when you ditch it. So you may have to enable the reaction control system. That's these little engines here. By pressing R, that means that these things will provide extra steering control. I'm not needing it right now, and ideally you shouldn't need it, but just in case, if you find your spacecraft is not turning the way you want it to, you can always turn on reaction control and get a little more uh, control authority. As I said, may not be necessary, but you never know. Okay, I'm going to let this get to 100, just for old time's sake. And there we go. Just cl That's close enough to 100. Okay, so let's set up a maneuver here and turn the whole thing around okay so that's a little high there we get this as close to circular as possible 98 102 102 just a little touch to bring that around that way there you see that Okay, that's closer. You see how, if this is below my uh, Apple apps here, right, you can adjust it by pulling up. If it's above it, you can adjust it by pushing down. The idea is to just get these as close as possible. So you can adjust these things up and down to try and match them. Odds are you're not actually going to manage it because your burn will not be perfect. But uh, we should be fine. So we have 59 second burn and we have got one and a half minutes or so, one minute 45 seconds before we actually need to do the burn. So I will do a little bit of time acceleration here, doing it manually. And we want to start our burn at exactly T minus 30 seconds. So come out of time acceleration when we get close. Make sure we're pointed at the right place. And listen to the awesome music. And... Burn. Okay, so there we go. We're going to hold that. I'm hoping there will be enough fuel in this to get it to the moon. And more importantly, I hope that once it gets there, it will be able to refuel the, the other spacecraft that I'm sending along. I think what I'm going to send is something very similar to the previous lander that we sent to Minmus. It might only use two tanks instead of three, but it will add a reaction control system. So. It'll need about 180 fuel units to like refuel completely. And I think that should give it enough to go to the, the lunar surface and back. And the idea is that by doing this, 
it will be able to visit multiple locations in the moon and harvest all the science and do all that stuff because that's a you know it's a, a an interesting way to play the game and it'll let me demonstrate the science lab and all this other awesome stuff of course that will have to be in future episodes because i think we're just making orbit here and hitting 20 minutes so until next time i'm scott manley fly safe